to the art scene. I'm your host, Lila Snow. Tonight, we are at a fantastic exhibition at the American Museum at the Katzen Center with Jack Rasmussen, director. And we're actually in the Alper Initiative, which is the first floor, an enormous space for a fantastic show of the work of the artist from the Washington Women's Art Center. And so first, the uh, title of the show, Latitudes, please explain. Well, I thought it was clever, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is uh, latitude uh, actually means freedom. Uh, you're given, give somebody latitude. Exactly. And then attitude is attitude. And I thought, well, freedom and attitude, that pretty much would sum up the Washington Women's Art Center. That is clever. And, and you got a fantastic response. I heard that the opening had thousands of people. Well, yes, literally. Uh, Not fake news thousands, <laughs> real thousands. 1,924 people came to the Saturday night opening. Well, that doesn't account the several hundred that came to Friday night's preview. Fantastic. And, uh, yeah, it was quite, quite amazing. So this was an enormous thing to put together. So many people worked. The, uh, Francoise Johallen, the curator, to look at all the submissions and select work. And uh, there are strong statements. There are personal statements. and. Uh, your involvement installing this, putting together a fantastic catalog, uh, and Judith Benson went through archives and did a lot. So uh, how did you put this enormous uh, enterprise together and make it work so well? Well, you got it just right. There was a tremendous group effort, really. I would say a couple of dozen people put in a lot of time on this show. And skilled people who knew what they were doing. Even skilled people <laughs> that knew what they were doing. Uh, you know, beginning with uh, Judith Benderson, who brought the idea to me, what, a couple of years ago. And uh, then all the people that have been involved in since, literally dozens of people, not counting the hundreds of people, actually, who you know, submitted work. And Catalog has uh, an essay by Claudia Vess, the to give a whole page to each artist. And over the years, they've done so many things besides being artists. Uh, the cover has uh, Lucy Blankstein. When she was director, the membership doubled. Uh, she's on the cover with a mass group and ends on, on her page, explains something about that where they made masks and went into public places to see the reaction to the mask. Uh, there were just so many components. So now that you explain the title uh, for, for the show, I wanted to explain the title for 13 Answers because I got involved when I took a course by Charlotte Robinson about understanding the art world and I said, let's use what we just learned. And 13 people stayed on to put on the show. And, and we were very different artists. And I thought of Gertrude Stein uh, saying on her deathbed, Alice B. Toklas uh, said, Gertrude, Gertrude, what's the answer? And Gertrude Stein hadn't lost her sense of humor and said, uh, I don't know, Alice, what's the question? So these were 13 different artists. Some had never done a resume and a, or a statement. And documentation was always an important thing. And so we did a catalog. And I remember some people never thought that anything they did was worthy of putting it into a resume. So realizing that they had done important, worthy things was already a breakthrough. There was so much support and excitement. 
Uh, and Joan Mista was in that group. She became the editor of the newsletter. And uh, Judith Benderson was in the group and became an important part of the center. And uh, uh, Sherry Sinatra was in it. And she has some, her work focuses on what she calls sites of conscience. She has a sanctuary piece. She did paintings of slave quarters, Ellis Island, and concentration camps. I particularly was impressed with Marilyn Horam, who was in 13 Answers and became exhibition director. She has a fantastic green painting. Judith Benison has a wonderful large canvas with divided spaces. Opposite her work is Altina's bench. She was in it, and they, they uh, Altina's piece is now in Judith's uh, collection. Maybe we could talk a little bit about the context in which this show appears. Uh, Please. You know, 13 Answers and the Washington Women's Art Center uh, in general are a perfect example of what was going on in the sort of early to mid 70s. Yes. Uh, we call it today DIY or do it yourself. <laughs> but, uh, you know, organizations were really taking matters into their own hands. They didn't feel like there was uh, access to the major. Uh, you know, venues for exhibiting uh, visual art, you know, commercial galleries and museums. So uh, a lot of these groups were coming along and uh, actually the uh, Washington Women's Art Center was started at the same time as the Washington Project for the Arts. Just, uh, oh, that's right. You know, not too far it, away. And they predated the National Museum for Women. In oh, the quite a few arts. years, yeah. Right, yes. so we, we were making history before the official history mm -hmm. of giving mm -hmm. women an opportunity. Uh, so you're going to do a tour of the show with Judith Benderson, and I would just like to say I very much appreciate you being here to do this. So I asked uh, Judith Benderson to uh, do this talk and walk with me because this was her idea, this whole show. So she needs to bear some responsibility <laughs> here. Uh, and I thought it was appropriate, Judith, to start mm -hmm. with uh, Lila Snow. Uh, of course, uh, this is a, these are two pieces up here, and they were actually made in 1972 in Paris in response yes. to the uh, United States bombing in Hanoi of the French embassy, mm -hmm. where uh, several people, and, including the ambassador, were killed. And this is her response to, to that action. And it's quite wonderful. It's uh, Isi Es Tombe. Uh, yes. And that means uh, here has fallen. And so it's kind of like a grave marker, but it's also like a kite. It's like uh, you know, something you know, that was used in a demonstration, uh, but it also has religious uh, significance. Those are rubbings from the tombstones in uh, Christian, uh, Muslim, and um, Jewish cemeteries. Right, Multi so multi-faith. Sort of making the, the point mm -hmm. of you know, everybody being involved in this, uh, this uh, tragic war. But it also uh, has, for me at least, a timeless feel because the, the sense of when you're talking about latitude and what the significance of that word is, that somehow it's, the sense of flying and, and expanse, and I think it was just, I think that it's beautiful work and it's beautifully placed, so. So let's, let's walk uh, farther along down here and maybe we could talk about Altina. You might have something to say about Altina's piece. This piece is a bench um, made out of fiberglass by an artist called Altina. Um, I believe she, uh, went by one name because she had four husbands. So it seemed at a certain point it was just easier to stick with the, the one name. Um, very, very interesting woman, very interesting life. Um, 
Lila and I both met her when she came to the very first Understanding the Art World series at the um, Washington Women's Art Center, although probably more than any of us, she already understood the art world. She had won the 1939 Lord & Taylor Design Award for creating Harlequin eyeglass frames. So um, Lila and I met her in 1976 at this Understanding the Art World seminar. And we continued doing the 13 Answer Show because we wanted to put into practice some of the things we had learned. Tina was just amazingly generous. She had an like, enormous apartment, one of those big co-ops on Upper Connecticut Avenue in Calorama with like 30 rooms or something. And we could actually see her working. And this kind of thing, she was doing this at the time, but she carved these out of uh, styrofoam and then sent them off to a studio where they would be cast um, in um, fiberglass. And there were different finishes. So this one has a very stone type finish, but I've seen others with actually the figures, this is called the lovers, reversed and a smoother finish, different color. So apparently she did a lot of variety. And then at the end of her life, she was living in New Mexico with a um, much younger husband. <laughs> and he was also an artist. And they worked together. And then they did uh, wood carvings. And I think it was the two of them. She, she was pretty frail at that time. So she would do the design. And uh, uh, her husband would do the, the actual carving. But those were sort of one. Uh, you know, sort of single pieces, whereas this was a series, and she had a bunch of other things that were a series that she did in the 70s and 80s. And oh, look, here is a painting by Judith Benderson. Uh, the title is Fire in the Blood. I it's sort of, I'm thinking back on, on, you know, kind of my, you know, mindset at the time, and I. I just liked the idea of doing things in patchwork. It just seemed that there were lots of little stories almost that I could tell, but that they you know, ran, one would run into the other. This particular work is by Marilyn Horam, who was one of our 13 answer artists. Um, again, she was there at the very beginning in the Understanding the Art World uh, series, which, by the way, that was repeated over a, a series of years. And Marilyn Horam did this lovely piece. It's called Contemplative Pot from 1982, which was the only kind of pot which was legal in those days. So Marilyn also is part of our uh, The Voices uh, series of interviews that Eloise Schottler and Lucy Blankstein did. So Marilyn is part of that. And um, it's just a really beautiful piece that, that she did. This is one of my favorites in the show. This is by uh, Sherry Zvarez Sanabria. And uh, she went to American University and got her MFA here in the 1970s. And uh, this work is now in the American University Museum's collection. And do you know a little bit about uh, what she was doing at this time, this body of work? Yeah, Sherry uh, was actually one of our 13 answer artists, which meant she took the same class that Lila and I and Malkina were taking. And um, uh, Sherry actually ended up being pretty successful. Work caught on quite quickly. Um, she tended to do empty spaces. I mean, she did a lot of um, paintings and drawings of the metro when it was being built. And then she was particularly interested in what she called sites of conscience. So they again, they were empty spaces, but she did uh, empty slave quarters. She did synagogues. She did churches. Um, actually, I was in Florence um, in the fall, and I went to the, the great synagogue there, specifically because that had been a subject of hers. This is, I believe, called the Eastport Sanctuary, Sanctuary. yes. And, um, but she, I mean, she did sites uh, in, in the United States as well. I think it was Rhode Island, the oldest synagogue as well. So she did concentration camps. Yes. I those yes. Extremely, so extremely powerful work. Yeah. So and they're empty, but they were loaded with. Yes, it's it's just kind of the the spirit of what's left 
when yeah. people aren't there anymore, but something is still there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, her work was just very moving. And yes. uh, unfortunately, she's not with us anymore. She, yeah. She yes. died several years ago. Yes, I think about 10 years ago. That was really a loss because she was also a very lovely person. <laughs> I think four of the artists in the show are no longer with us, and I think that was one of the reasons why it was important to get the yes. show done. Yes, a sense of that, that we wanted to be as inclusive as possible and for people to still be here and still be able to participate. Yeah. And so, um, but I want to thank you because you made this possible. I mean, this was really just a huge undertaking, really a labor of love. I was. mean, there were so, and there were so many people who were so eager to be involved. Uh, Barbara Willanen and Claudia Vess wrote the history. Uh, Eloise Schottler and uh, Lucy Blankstein did the um, voices presentation. I mean, it, it's, you know, where they recorded, you know, women from uh, the early years of the center. So it, and I'm probably not even including everybody, but it was just a group effort of yeah. people who really cared about the center because yeah. it meant so much to them. And a lot of people went kind of in and out, you know, including me. I was there in the 70s and a little bit in the 80s and then back again in the mid 80s, you know, and, you know, people, there were a lot of foreign service people who, you know, when they got transferred, they left Washington. And so there wasn't always the continuity um, because I don't think we thought about the organization for posterity. But it turns out that a lot of us were still here and we still had work and we still had those really strong feelings mm -hmm. about what this organization yeah. meant to us. Can you tell us something about the third floor exhibition. You have a, fant a fantastic show on the third floor. And here again is a terrific catalog to go with that. And so it's a cartoonist. It's a show that a federal museum could not have done. So fortunately, there is a director, Jack Masmussen, at the American University Museum. So uh, we have a retrospective of Ralph Steadman on the third floor. And uh, he was a cartoonist and an illustrator, but he was much more than that. Uh, he really was taking a very sort of biting, satirical, yes. but very funny look at, you know, our culture, uh, you know, w through such venues as uh, Fear and Loathing on Las Vegas, which he collaborated on with Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, so he's, uh, he's an amazing illustrator. He's really a rock star. We had people from all over the country coming to the opening just to see him. Uh, but as you say, uh, you know, I mean, my personal favorites are a wonderful portrait of Ronald Reagan, sort of manhandling the Statue of Liberty, and uh, and of course uh, the portrait of George Wallace is just absolutely incredible. You know, so there's always a a really sharp point to be made about uh, the times we're living in, the culture, you know, our surrounding. Uh, scene and uh, and but also great humor you know so oh yes <laughs> that's nice. right that's right and not surprisingly Donald Trump well this was a great treat thank you so much this is a wonderful show wonderful documentation thank you Jack Krasnitsyn director of the Amer American University Museum at the Katzen Center and I'll see you next time on the art scene. This is Lyle Snow. <laughs> <laughs>